Queridos filhos e filhas, estamos num Padre Missão, estamos na Polônia, exatamente no convento onde Irmã Faustina viveu. E nesse Padre Missão teremos a participação da Irmã Teresa, que é das Irmãs da Misericórdia. Iremos conhecer alguns lugares. Padre Missão, Santa Faustina Kowalska, Jesus Misericordioso, eu confio em vós. Eu quero ser um instrumento vivo, meu Senhor, envia-me para ser o seu abraço acolhedor e levar tua palavra, ser canal da tua graça, completar carreira e guardar a fé. Santa Faustina Kowalska nasceu no dia 25 de agosto de 1905. Ela tinha oito irmãos, é a oitava filha, oito filhos, e o nome de batismo é Helena. E aqui ela veio para a Cracóvia, visitou vários conventos e por fim chegou a esse belíssimo convento que nós vamos conhecer agora com a irmã Teresa. Uh, I would like to invite you to, to the, to the chapel. Because this is uh, this is the convent where Sister Faustina lived. She entered in Warsaw, but then she came here to complete her postulancy and also her novitiate. And then here in Krakow, she spent the longest time of her religious life. She was a sister for 13 years, but here in Krakow, she spent over five years, including her stay in the hospital in Prondnik. E lembrando que foi no postulantado que ela começou a ter a revelação de Jesus misericordioso. When she entered the convent in Warsaw, she uh, after a few weeks, she wanted to leave the congregation. And that was in Warsaw and Jesus appeared to her in her room there and say and with tears in her his eyes and Faustina said, well she was named Helena then. She said, Jesus who has made you so sad? And Jesus said, you will if you leave this congregation. And so she decided that she will stay. Actually, her name of Sister Faustina, she received here in Krakow. When she came here, she finished her postulancy and she received the name Sister Maria Faustina. Muitos peregrinos vêm diariamente a este lugar. Sim, sí, uh, yes. Um, this is a place of pilgrimages. Every year there's around two million people who come here. Uh, actually the record-breaking year was 2016, about five million. This shrine I is among the top 30 largest places of religious worship in the whole world, uh, including for all religions, according to number of pilgrims and the number of countries from which they come. Last year alone, there were thousands of prayers, intentions, and thanksgiving for graces they have received here. This is uh, the most important place in this shrine is the chapel. Uh, this is the heart of the shrine. This is where our Lord is. This is where Sister Faustina prayed. Uh, a lot, offered her life. Um, but what makes this place special? Why is this important? Why do people from all over the world come here? Uh, it's because of Sister Faustina, whom God has chosen to be his apostle of mercy. He chose her to remind the world of his love. Uh, and here, Here in this room, on top here, is where she died. So in a sense, from here, she went straight to God, who is mercy. Um, Father asked me earlier, when did she start seeing Jesus? The date that we consider the beginning of the revelations of divine mercy is February 22nd, 1931 in Potsk, in another place. That's where Jesus started to show himself as divine mercy. 
which is the summary of the whole message. And Sister Faustina was there, then she moved in another house and went different places. But so we say it began there. But what began in Płock, as, if, as it were, was completed here in Krakow. And that's why this place is so important. It's because as if Jesus called Faustina to this congregation, uh, whose charism is mercy, to make present it to the whole world. But, you know, you need a spokesperson. So he calls this girl, Helena, and tell her who wanted to leave, look, I have prepared many graces for you here, don't leave. And so sister Helena decides to stay, and so she stays, and she receives what? The grace of the message of divine mercy that she is supposed to bring to the world in order to prepare it for the second coming of the Lord. And that is just amazing. And he says, I am sending you to the whole world to prepare for my second coming. That means her mission is not just limited to a certain period or a certain century. Yeah. It's to the end until he comes. And, and the, the heart is here we, because actually I was just reading another book by our sister Elspieta Shepak saying about she gathered all the, the, the revelations of Jesus to Sister Faustina in this chapel. And you know what's amazing? In this chapel, Sister Faustina experienced the Holy Trinity. Yeah. In this chapel, she saw the events of the Passion, the entrance to Jerusalem, the institution of the Eucharist. She saw Jesus uh, suffering. Uh, she saw him on the cross. But but note what's the she hear Jesus he, she heard Jesus here talking to souls the different souls despairing sinners uh, those striving for perfection the perfect soul she saw him encouraging her to pray the chaplet to immerse in his mercy to think about the passion and but what is God's mercy is it information no God's mercy is Jesus's revealed is God's mercy is fully revealed in the passion of Jesus yeah. and, and can you imagine and here here in this chapel Faustina experienced that in a very diff special way she would she would be praying and then she would be immersed in the Godhead she would be immersed in the Holy Trinity and she feels she comes to know the deep abyss of God's mercy or she will see Jesus on the cross and then she will experience his love for sinners here but what is all that saying? It's just for Sister Faustina? No. He told her, Secretary of my mercy, write, Secretaria, no? Write what everything I tell you about my mercy because it is meant for a great number of souls. And so she's writing experiences, not just for her, but for the whole world. And even the conversation here, it's like, look, it's for you, it's for all souls. And that's why people are coming here. They're called by God. Um, we will be entering the chapel, um, and I want to, where her tomb is, and the most and the famous image of divine mercy. So we are entering this very special place, a place of the presence of God, where He wants to give His mercy, a place of miracles. People have received many miracles here, many graces, conversions, a lot of them, and so you will see see the gifts, the votive offerings on the wall. But most importantly, Jesus, of course, is in the Eucharist, the Blessed Sacrament. And Jesus is in the image, the, the representation of Jesus' divine mercy on the, in the image on the left side altar, which is the summary of divine mercy of the Paschal mystery. So Jesus is there and Faustina, the apostle and secretary and minister of God's mercy is there. Good. Fantástico. Profundo, não é? Entendermos aquilo que eu sempre falo que o mistério de Jesus misericordioso é muito mais do que, como a irmã disse, é uma experiência de vida que resulta num grande milagre da visão. Nós estamos num lugar dentro da capela e a irmã vai dizer onde Santa Faustina foi primeiro enterrada. Sister Faustina was first laid here in 1966 when she was taken from the cemetery over here. It's actually, it's actually under here because she was laid in the wall beneath. So that was here. 
this was where the miracle of Maureen Daigan, the miracle that was used for her beatification occurred. And that is why the votive offering is the map of the United States with the logo of the congregation and also the cross there in Massachusetts because Maureen Daigan is from Massachusetts. Senhor Jesus misericordioso, eu te peço por todos nós no Brasil, precisamos de tua intervenção, que vossos raios curativos recaiam sobre toda a nação, purificando-nos, fortalecendo-nos na fé. Pedimos por todos os associados da obra evangelizar, é preciso, abençoai-os, protegei-os. Nós tivemos um privilégio muito grande, a irmã Teresa nos convidou e nós estamos aqui neste convento que é onde morou Santa Faustina. Ela, Santa Faustina, morou neste convento. Sim, she died in this convent in the room just above, actually just above here. Um, but this is the same corridor in which she walked here, you know, from the chapel to the refectory. Uh, she heard Jesus, you know, in different places here in the convent, but this is where she lived. It's very special. Irmã Teresa, ela, quais foram os afazeres de Santa Faustina aqui no convento? Uh, among her, uh, her duties, was she was she worked in the garden. She was also doorkeeper. Uh, she helped in the kitchen with the girls because you, this building is like a letter L. That other side is for our apostolate, so she worked in the kitchen there, depending on when she was staying. But also her assignment there during the last years of her life when she was sick was to write the diary. Querida irmã, nós fiz, fizemos o beijo da relíquia e sabemos que é uma relíquia de Santa Faustina, é uma parte do osso de Santa Faustina, do esqueleto. Yes, we were the relic that we venerated in the chapel is a bone of Sister Faustina. A irmã chamou a atenção, a irmã Teresa, que tem um quadro aqui significativo que é um pintor que fez o quadro de Jesus misericordioso que está na capela. Por favor. Please. Sim. This is the a uh, uh, picture of uh, Adolf Hewa, he was the Polish painter who painted the Divine Mercy image that we have in the chapel. And actually, it's Jesus in the diary told Faustina, I want this image to be venerated first in your chapel and then throughout the world. This image has been hanging in the chapel since 1944. And then Father Andras, he was the confessor of Sister Faustina here in Krakow. Joseph. Joseph, yes, yes, yes. So he he worked with him. He gave him the copy of the first image from Vilnius and the ones the instructions in the diary, and he painted the image. Father Andras blessed the image painted by him in the chapel in 1944, and since then there has been monthly devotions to Divine Mercy in honor of Divine Mercy. And they were big. People not just from Krakow came to the ch chapel, but also outside of Krakow. And that's why, because of so many people coming, uh, in 1968, uh, Cardinal Wojtyla in made, this sh made this chapel, included this chapel in the list of shrines in the archdiocese. 
and then in 1992, it became the Shrine of Divine Mercy. But this, he painted that image that is well known throughout the world, and through that image, Jesus wants to give many, many graces to souls. And, and, and it's actually very beautiful and very powerful because it shows his love, his love in Jesus. Amen. E andando pelo corredor, nós nos deparamos com mais dois quadros que são os confessores, os dois confessores de Santa Faustina. A própria Irmã Teresa nos explica. Please. Here, Father, we are with the two priests, the two confessors of Sister Faustina. Uh, this is Father Sopochko, the confessor of Sister Faustina in Vilnius. He was the one who told Sister Faustina to start writing the diary because he didn't have much time to listen to her confessions so much. So that's why we have the diary. He asked her to write it. But of course, the Lord as well, and that order was confirmed by the superiors. Sister Faustina also was here in Krakow and lived long here. And her confessor in this place is Father Andras, a Jesuit. So he helped her as well. E nós estamos caminhando e a irmã Teresa nos mostra aqui as superiores, as madres superiores aqui do convento. Por favor, irmã. Okay. We are here before uh, uh, the pictures of the different superiors. Um, Sister Faustina had Sister Mihaela Morachevska. This was her uh, superior and also the mother general of the congregation in her lifetime. This is Sister Maria Josefa Broza. This was her novice mistress. Mm -hmm. And this is Sister Irena Krzyżanowska. This was the superior in Krakow when she was here and also the superior in Vilnius when she was there first. E agora a irmã Teresa nos convida a subir para o coro do, da capela, um lugar privilegiado que você que está acompanhando com o padre em missão tem oportunidade. Se viesse aqui como peregrino, provavelmente não, mas Jesus está abrindo muitas portas, graças a Deus. Olha, que tal você se tornar um associado, 0 operadora 41 3221 6060? E a gente vai poder mostrar mais e mais lugares santos para você. Aqui. Ok. Here we are going to the choir loft of the, of the chapel. Sister Faustina also prayed here. So that's why I wanted you to show, to see it. But, uh, ok. Some sisters are praying. So. As, irmãs, as irmãs estão rezando. Muito silêncio agora. It's nice because there's no people, you know, it's quieter. <laughs> A senhora pode contar um pouco como Filipina veio parar aqui? Sua vocação? Oh, it's a long story, but Jesus is a fisherman. <laughs> so she, he fished me from Philippines and I landed in Boston in the United States because that is the house for English speaking. And then, uh, and then I... I had a change six years ago. I, I was changed, moved here, and it, I'm very, very glad. I'm very, very happy. A irmã acaba de me contar algo fantástico. Você vai lembrar do profeta Jeremias. Olhando daqui para lá, tem a Santíssima Trindade. Deste lado, eu te amei com amor eterno. Escrito em polonês? Polonês. 
e do lado de lá. Por isso eu te chamei para mim. É a espiritualidade de Santa Faustina. Talvez tenhamos nós que entender muito bem esse texto. Deus, Jesus te ama com amor eterno e por isso você é dele. Amém. Nós estamos caminhando, as portas se abrem, as portas se fecham e a irmã Teresa nos fala que aqui tem um grande benfeitor. Yes, this is Prince Alexander Lubomirsky. He is a great financier and philanthropist who lived in France and he gave the money that allowed um, this cardinal Albin Dunayevsky to buy this possession, this land, and to give it to sisters. Because he wanted to give the money for charitable purposes, and the cardinal thought of our congregation. So he bought it from two brothers who had land here, and then he gave it to our congregation. But it was through his desire to have something for charitable purposes, especially for, for girls and women. Estamos indo para o museu, mas com licença, aqui o que deveria ter em todas as casas, São Miguel Arcanjo, olha aqui, no convento das irmãs, na portaria, São Miguel Arcanjo, defendei-nos no combate, São Miguel Arcanjo, olha lá, irmã lembrando, a cruz sagrada seja minha luz, São Miguel Arcanjo, príncipe e guerreiro. That place is actually very special because in the year 2000, in the Jubilee year, during the canonization of Sister Faustina, that place was united with Rome via TV two-way transmission. So in the St. Peter's Square, they could see what was happening here, and here we could see what was happening in Rome because there was a big uh, uh, screen. And Sister Faustina wrote about it in her diary at a certain point that she was, take, she was taking part in a celebration of divine mercy yeah. and she couldn't understand how it was possible that she was in Rome at the same time as being here in Wagevniki. But she didn't know what it was, but it was her own canonization on Divine Mercy Sunday in the year 2000. São coisas de Deus, são milagres de Deus. Nós estamos bem próximos da do museu. Sim. This we have here the gate that and that you know, allows people to enter to the shrine. Yeah. This was the only gate that existed in that time because the whole place was closed. Uh, when Sister Faustina became the porter or the doorkeeper, yeah, yeah. Jesus sent a, a cherubim to be sitting at, at the gate to take care of the gate <laughs> and Faustina. So that was here. And also because Sister Faustina as a portress was very much merciful to the poor that came to the gate. When the poor left the gate, they blessed God. They thanked him because they were received and helped very well by Sister Faustina. So one day, a young man came to the gate, you know, without a hat, barefoot, asking for soup. So Sister Faustina looked for soup, gave, heated some, gave it to the man, to the young man, And then when the man gave back the soup, she heard in her heart that this was Jesus. And he, the young man disappeared from, his, from her eyes. And then she heard in her soul that Jesus says, I came down from my throne in heaven to taste of the fruits of your mercy because the poor that leave this gate bless me. So I have come to taste your fruits. So this place is actually a testament of how important 
our deeds of mercy, that we do good to our brothers, because what we do to them, we do to Jesus. So I want to show you the museum, because here the bell is here, which Jesus rang. E agora estamos entrando nesse museu de Santa Faustina. This is how the old gate looked like and how the entrance to the main to the convent appeared. And Jesus came to this door and pulled the pulled the rope. You can actually see a little, you know, the rope there on the left side of the door to ring the bell. And that bell is that one. O sino ali, gente. O sino que Jesus tocou. Os frutos da misericórdia de Faustina. This is the best relief of the event that happened when Sister Faustina served the poor young man with soup. He disappeared and then she heard in her heart that this was Jesus. Portanto, é para abrir todo esse cenário para quem está visitando. And that's the part from the diary that uh, relates the event. Nós estamos entrando no que era uma cela. Cela é um quarto onde viveu Santa Faustina. Os peregrinos olham por fora, nós vamos ver por dentro. Segue. Gente, isso é, isso é, é Deus. É Deus, é São Pio abrindo, Santa Faustina abrindo caminho. É Jesus misericordioso. Viu? Abre-se a tranca. normally do this but uh, but you have you know because it's hard to film with the glass ela está abrindo é muito raro acontecer isso bem-aventurada irmã teresa <laughs> my god gente nós estamos num lugar sagrado Realmente um momento muito significativo para todos nós, para a TV evangelizar de todo o Brasil. Ok, we are in this little room. It's a replica, reconstruction of how Sister Faustina's room would have looked like. Um, she would have had a bed. She would have had a night table. And then she also had a table mm. and chair because she was writing the diary. Not all sisters have, have yeah. this, yeah. Uh, but part of the normal cell would have this because we didn't have, you know, we, there were too many sisters to have to go to the, to the bathroom. So they have a wash bowl that they would mm. use. And s because each room of a sister is not a real room with walls, it's just divided by, ah. it's like more a dormitory. Nah. Si. Nossa, os dormitórios não tinham, não eram paredes, eram divisórias uh -huh, assim. Uh -huh. And that is why Sister Faustina in the diary was saying how how much love there is in the rule of silence because, you know, if somebody is sick and in the room, if the next sister is talking there, it, then the other sister cannot rest. É verdade, aqui é uma réplica, mas algumas coisas pertencem a Santa Faustina. Number four, the cape, that belongs, that is Sister Faustina's. This... This cup is hers, she used it in the refectory here in Krakow. is the altar this was este altar but this wasn't in the convent this belonged to her family her father bought this in Chestochova and brought it home but Helena Helena Kowalska yes. she was the one in charge of the altar so she cleaned it she put flowers candles so she took charge she was in charge of the altar when she left home to work another sister took care of it um, but then that you know, as the, the sister Faustina died and the sister became older, she gave this as a gift to our to our sisters. Uh, 
Sagrado Coração de Jesus, Imaculado Coração de Maria e Jesus. Um, um, forte espiritualidade. Um, yes, because she came from a very prayerful family uh, in Svinice. Her dad, when he would wake up, she would he would already sing the the little office to the Blessed Mother in the morning. So the kids, the children, were taught in a very religious atmosphere. You know, the dad would read to them uh, the stories of saints. So it was a very good family, really, in terms of the faith. They passed on the faith. Irma. É um livro desse, o que pode ser um livro desse? É só um exemplo. Ela poderia ter tido um livro by her side. Não, é só. Ah, sim. Um, dois, três. E falta o quarto. Vamos ver. Gente, nós estamos. Eu nunca imaginei, nunca imaginei estar aqui. Estou muito feliz. This lamp was Sister Faustina's lamp in Vilnius, and she used it to write the diary. Irmã, o que temos aqui? These are um, instruments of penance. Instruments. We have. These are the dis the discipline, um, and that's like a. See. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a hair shirt. No, sillies. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one, a counting bead over there, you know, the small one to help count when you're praying. This one. You know, it's a ah, count. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, they, they say it's pro probably, it's not sure, but probably Sister Faustina used that to keep track when she was praying the Hail Marys, the thousand Hail Marys to Blessed Mother. Num lugar como este, Santa Faustina viveu o seu postulantado, noviciado e mudando de uma outra casa, mas praticamente até sua morte com tuberculose foi num quarto como este. Uh, she, Sister Faustina lived in a religious cell and this is how the cells looked like and as when she had tuberculosis the same thing, but um, uh, certain when her illnesses, illness became very grave, very serious, she was sent actually to the hospital. She was sent to Prondnik here in Krakow twice for a longer period, one for more than two, three months. Um, towards the end, after she came back from Prondnik, because she was already very sick with tuberculosis, she was put in the infirmary. It's big, it's a little bigger, oh, yeah. it's sunnier. Um, so, but pretty much a cell, it, It's very simple. Quero dar um beijo mais uma vez e pedir que Santa Faustina me proteja. Proteja Santa Faustina no céu. E que eu possa chegar ao céu pela misericórdia de Jesus. E que eu possa conduzir as pessoas para a tua infinita misericórdia. Ajude-me, Santa Faustina, a mergulhar no oceano da misericórdia, a mergulhar no oceano da misericórdia. Amém. Nós estamos chegando ao final desse Padre em Missão, mas é muita coisa, é muita emoção. E nós estamos aqui com a irmã Tereza, ela, vou contar, ela disse que estava preocupada, mal conseguiu comer, porque não tinha nem fome, mas preocupada, mas fala com carinho, com amor, ela vivencia tudo isso. Irmã, ainda três questões. São João Paulo, enquanto estudante, ele vinha rezar aqui nessa capela? Uhum. Yes. Uh, Saint John Paul II, as a young man, Karol Wojtyla, uh, came here to the shrine uh, because he worked as a worker in Solvay. After his work, he would come here, probably using this gate, walking with wooden shoes to the shrine, and he would pray. 
before the image of divine mercy. And he said when he first came here in 1997 that uh, this message of divine mercy is as it were inscribed in in the history in the history of the of the war as a message of hope and i personally understood it here at the shrine i understood the meaning of the divine mercy message and from here i took it with me when i went to the sea of peter and if you notice his first two encyclicals the first was the redeemer of man and then the second is the Dives in Misericordia, Divine Mercy. Everything. So he really, he, he saw how important it is that it's now as a first to encyclical, as a Pope, he wants to bring it to close to, te to people to know that God is love. É a, é a, é bebeu da fonte de Jesus misericordioso e levou para o mundo. Impressionante. Segundo questionamento, é, é com, do ponto de vista histórico, as revelações oficiais se deram entre guerras uh -huh. e foi teve uma mensagem muito forte não foi neste sentido uh, John Paul II noted that this message was given in between world wars uh, Sister Faustina already had visions of Jesus uh, early on but the formal beginning of this message as something that God really wants the whole world to know and to remember was in began in 1931 and ended with sister faustina's death here in krakow which is in 1938 so think about that that was 1931 and 1938 the period between the world wars the first world end of the first world war and just before the second world war began and actually not far from krakow here in wagavniki is auschwitz which is the modern day calvary which is a very clear image of evil attacking man yeah. and g wars are like that wars is about destruction of man by um, another man but this mercy message is about god becoming man and suffering and dying for us and giving his life because he wants to give his life for us and that we can believe in this mercy. So if you think about it, this message is given in between world wars. It's as if, look, something big is coming, something bad, but don't be afraid because God has become a man and he died for us and is risen. So whatever is coming, be it a great war that will destroy anything, and Sister Faustina said, even if there was a whole wave of evil coming at me, I will not be scared because I have God's mercy with me. And so this is like God is saying, look world. And he chose this place as a declaration, as a testament that his mercy is stronger than sin and death. And that even his story, Jesus is so good. He uses history too. Like, look, he's giving it to this sister. He called to this congregation and the message is just between the world wars because then this war is coming because but the message is don't be afraid. I am mercy. I love you and I give you life. Você percebe como a irmã fala com tanto entusiasmo, acreditando. Parabéns. É, a senhora é uma grande apóstola da misericórdia. E eu queria, para finalizar, é, o apostolado que vocês, irmãs, hoje fazem da misericórdia. So, because of Faustina's mission of bringing the message of mercy to the whole world, the, co the congregation of the sisters continue that mission. And here we have, of course, the mission, first of all, of prayer. So we have prayer to implore mercy. Actually, it was revealed here, three o'clock. And so we have prayer to Im implore mercy, adoration for mercy. That's part of our apostolic work, yeah. prayer to inf implore mercy. But at the same time, to proclaim God's mercy, we have different uh, ways. We have here actually in this building, the Faustinum, Association of the Apostles of Divine Mercy. It's an international association of, of different people, uh, priests, religious, lay who feel the charism of Sister Faustina, who feel that fire yeah. of mercy in their heart, and they want to spread it. 
So they can be members, they can be volunteers, but here is the, uh, uh, shall we say, the headquarters of, of that association. They, they uh, pr provide formation for people and also retreats and recollections. Um, from this place, we have uh, the quarterly magazine called Orange, which means message of mercy. And it goes, you know, uh, quarterly e each year, three times. Um, again, it, it shows different articles about divine mercy and different um, miracles and graces that people have received here and they write to us. What else? Um, the sisters we have, of, oh, of course, how can I forget? The historical uh, beginning of the historical apostolate of our congregation is the work with the girls, which we saw earlier. Next, next to the chapel is we have a center for girls. It's actually called the House of Mercy, Casa de la Misericordia, and 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 in this house, it's like the girls who are there experience again God's mercy. These girls, uh, they have trouble in their lives in, in, in before in in, in earlier it, they were prostitutes and now they are sent by the court they have uh, some problems with substance abuse or or some things with the, with the use of the body but here in this place we have sisters and together with lay people who help these young women to rediscover the gaze of God upon them, that it is a gaze of love, because normally these people are wounded and they look badly on themselves, that they're worth nothing. But in this place, the sisters through their work with them, teaching them, teaching them uh, a school and also a, a way of, of, of work, means of work, uh, they discover that God loves them. And work is also used as a way to, you know, develop virtues and, and all that. But uh, so that's just among the different things that is happening here. We have a w internet uh, that's almost like a, a way to also bring the message to people through through these um, means because we have many visitors to this. Uh, the masses uh, masses is televised here by the television Krakow. Uh, so. Bom, eu quero agradecer e espero que você tenha não só gostado, mas mergulhado na divina misericórdia. E o que eu desejo de todo o coração é que esse aproximar-se de Jesus nos faça buscarmos sermos santos, como Santa Faustina é, confiando sem medo, sem medo na misericórdia divina. O Senhor esteja convosco, Ele está no meio de nós por intercessão de Santa Faustina Kowalska, pelos méritos das santas chagas de nosso Senhor Jesus Cristo. Deus os abençoe, Pai, Filho e Espírito Santo. Amém. Irmã, muito, muito obrigado. Very, very. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. E Deus abençoe a senhora. E eu vou passar pelo mesmo portão para proclamar a misericórdia. <risos> Goodbye. 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 Amém. Amém.